Hello and welcome to the best of hindsight tonight. I'm Damian Musiani and here is this week's theme. Enjoy. Protests over last week's Roe v. Wade reversal by the Supreme Court sprang up all over the country to draw attention to the added hardships now created by state-level abortion bans. And unless you're heavily invested in wire clothes hangers, there isn't much of a silver lining to this one. Abortion is now either banned or going to be banned in 22 states, which impacts all relevant expecting mothers, but especially those who are poor or underprivileged. That said, there are alternatives, and you can still get an abortion in America. It's $178 for a bus ride from the bottom of Texas to pro-choice Chicago to have the procedure done, but don't expect the Supreme Court to help you foot the bill. The message from SCOTUS is, sorry sis, suck it up, which may as well be their new slogan. Hey, if you really want to blame someone for the row reversal, remember this guy? Yep, President Barack Obama. He had the power to codify Roe v. Wade via the Freedom of Choice Act, which was only possible with Democratic occupancy of the White House, a majority in the House of Reps, and a 60-seat filibuster control in the Senate at the same time. Not only did Obama have this holy trinity at his disposal for four months in 2009, but while campaigning for the election, he told Planned Parenthood this. Well, the first thing I'd do as president is, is sign the Freedom of Choice Act. Uh, that's the first thing that I did. Hmm. Of course, that was not the first thing he did as president. In fact, after he got elected, he then said uh, this. Now, the Freedom of Choice Act is not my highest legislative priority. Forget highest priority. The Freedom of Choice Act was not a priority at all because he never bothered to get it passed. You're already president, right? The people love you. All of America was just one big Phoebe Waller bridge rubbing one out while watching Barry talk. It was so worth it. And freedom has always been the business model for the 4th of July here in the States, and 2022 is no different, beginning with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, traditionally awarded around Independence Day each year. President Joe Biden is set to honor a widely diverse class of 17 individuals this week, nearly half of which are female. By way of comparison, former President Donald Trump gave out 24 medals during his administration, and all but three were awarded to men. And I'm sure if he was allowed to give one to himself, he would have added his own name to the list. And why not? The Medal of Freedom has a subjective criteria for recognition. Literally anybody can get one, and nobody can take it back once you have it. Bill Cosby was recognized for 40 years of being an especially meritorious contributor to the nation's cultural endeavors. Those endeavors being 60 quaalude rapes, allegedly. He has a Presidential Medal of Freedom. So does an alleged racist, bigamist, rapist, Lolita Express, invented the casting couch, anti-Semitist, waterboarding, 24-hour racist, filibuster, serial cheater, deadbeat dad, lied on TV, made fun of AIDS patients, Chappaquiddick, and from my cold, dead hands. In 2013, 43% of Barack Obama's Medal of Freedom recipients who were living at the time also, completely coincidentally I might add, donated thousands of dollars to his re-election fund the year before. Why give a thank you card when you can send the very best? It's as American as apple pie and hot dogs. One time vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin is throwing her trapper hat in the ring and running for Congress. If elected, this would be Palin's first public sector job since serving as Alaska's governor 13 years ago. Since then, she's learned a lot of lessons to share with her constituents, including how to lose a libel suit against the New York Times, how to behave at parties, how to say that's not me when asked to sign copies of bossy pants, how to have a son that's arrested multiple times for domestic assault, how to promote abstinence-only sex education at the same time that her underage daughter was getting pregnant, and how to refuse a COVID-19 vaccine and then get COVID-19. Is America ready for another big Sarah Palin slap in the face? <clears throat> you betcha. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week with more of the best of Hindsight Tonight.